The challenge. Build a submarine that can launch a ballistic missile. Build a ballistic missile that can be launched from a submarine. Tell the submarine where it is on Earth with unparalleled precision. Oh, by the way, you don't have simulation software, high-performance computing, calculators, transistors, semiconductors, or MATLAB. You have a slide rule, simple data processing equipment, and a chalkboard. After World War II, rocketry development slowed from the urgency of wartime to a peacetime research and development pace. In 1954, a report revealed that existing land-based U.S. strategic delivery systems were vulnerable to enemy attack. The Eisenhower administration made ballistic missile development a national priority. The resulting Navy Special Projects Office, SP, took on the groundbreaking challenge of developing a submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missile system. The Navy saw APL's successes with ship-launched guided missiles as a stepping stone to solving the problem. In 1957, Captain, later Admiral, Levering Smith asked APL, then in an ad hoc advisory role on the Fleet Ballistic Missile Program, to take on the role of technical consultant. APL studied solid rocket safety, solid propellant burning problems, performance and test plans, electronics, rotatable rocket nozzles, and in-flight staging. Captain Smith asked APL to evaluate the ground and flight test preparations. Smith later said that he selected APL due to its strengths in science, technology, and systems, and the lab's independent status as a university laboratory. Alexander Kosyakov, William Avery, and Frank McClure leveraged their knowledge of rocket propulsion gained at the Allegheny Ballistics Laboratory to perfect the agreed-upon best solution, the solid-fueled rocket. Solid rockets were lighter, could be launched from a submarine, and were better for attaining the speed and distance required by an intercontinental ballistic missile. The launch of Sputnik 1 by the Soviets in October 1957 heated the Cold War and added new urgency to the FBM project, now called Polaris. The launch was also the catalyst for one of APL's heralded inventions, the Transit Satellite Navigational System. Two lab employees used the Doppler shift of the beacon signal from Sputnik to fix its position in orbit. Frank McClure and Richard Kirshner recognized that a small constellation of satellites could enable ships and submarines at sea to know their precise location on the Earth, a crucial part of the Polaris targeting system. Back on land in 1958, testing of the full-scale Polaris launch system experienced setbacks. But by early 1959, APL teams at Cape Canaveral helped the contractor solve issues with launch tests, and Polaris AX-6 flew 300 miles downrange over the Atlantic Ocean. SP tasked APL with evaluating, testing, and integrating all of the system components that made up the Polaris weapons system. Those evaluations were put to the test on July 18, 1960, when the first fully operational Polaris tests were planned aboard the USS George Washington with national science and military leadership in attendance. At T minus eight seconds, APLer Bob Kimmelhor aborted the launch when he observed a faulty signal from the missile umbilical cord. Bob's actions likely averted a major disaster. Two days later, just three years after program inception, two Polaris missiles successfully launched from the waters off of Cape Canaveral, demonstrating to the world that the most complex and secure part of the U.S. nuclear arsenal was operational. The capability and reliability of Polaris made it the strongest part of America's nuclear triad, deterring Soviet aggression for decades. Many of Polaris's core technologies, navigation, rocket propulsion, and system test and evaluation laid the groundwork for the modernization of U.S. Navy combat and submarine systems. 
The success of Polaris should be measured not only in terms of the breathtaking pace of development and the number of technological breakthroughs necessary to make it work. Polaris and its descendants strengthened America's role as a democratic superpower and have assured the security of our nation for over 50 years.